Okay, um, our uh, next uh, talk is uh, entitled Conserved uh, NAKL uh, Mold Protein Network Controls Molting in Sialagans, and it's by Vladimir uh, Lecetic. Hello, so I'm Vladimir Lajetic. Uh, a little bit different accent this time. Um, and yes, I will be talking about um, molting, which is a process similar to the one that left half of my face ex experiencing right now. Um, as you can see, molting is really important process in, in C. elegans um, because they need it so that they can proceed from one larval stage to another and to adulthood. And so um, they first start synthesizing new cuticle underneath of the old one and many things can go wrong so you can have or they can have various molting defects for example enclosure in the old cuticle or if they go further and release cuticle from one side of the body um, also they can be incompletely uh, enclosed in the old cuticle together with this novel phenotype that we recently described as corset phenotype where the head and tail of the worm are releasing the old cuticle but the middle part of the body is still constricted also, in the process of complete release of the old cuticle, um, some worms tend to uh, have the attachments of the old cuticle um, to their body, which is still a problem. But most of the worms succeed to get out of the old cuticle and develop further um, and grow. Um, our lab is really interested in these two phenotypes, so this is complete um, enclosure and incomplete enclosure in the old cuticle, because two genes that I'm working on, NACL2 and NACL3, actually mutations in these genes cause um, molting defects, complete enclosure um, in knockout allele and uh, incomplete enclosure or uh, corset phenotype um, in hypomorphic alleles. We created a lot of hypomorphic alleles and some of them are actually viable. But when we combine them, we can see that they're synthetically lethal. So combining viable hypomorphic alleles of NACL2 and NACL3 um, shows that they are acting in the same or parallel pathways. You can see that these are much smaller than their rescued siblings, and you can rescue these either by a wild-type copy of only one, NACL2 or NACL3. Um, so we wanted to know where these proteins are expressed, and as our mosaic analysis suggested, they are expressed in epidermis. Um, you can see their um, expression in puncta throughout epidermis, but especially they're enriched in the case of NACL2 at the seam cell boundary. Um, so seam cell is the black region in the middle which is not expressing the protein. And you can see that NACL3 is a little bit different, a little bit more diffuse and not so much enriched at the seam cell boundary. If we look at the medial plane, you can see that they are not uh, expressed in the nuclei, at least not at the high level. So we also wanted to know if they are co-localizing with each other, and surprisingly, in most cases, they do not. But in some animals and in lower planes, usually we can see some co-localization between those two. So what, what um, are NACLs? They are members of NEMA or NAC kinase family, NEMA standing for never in mitosis A. And um, this is a big family of kinases, and as you can see here, NACL2 is similar to NAC8 in humans, and NACL3 is extremely similar to NAC6 and 7 in humans. So um, NAC6 and 7 are really important because they're overexpressed in a variety of tumors, and they act a role which is not completely well known, but they're involved in the centrosome separation in um, spindle formation and cytokinesis in human cells. We don't see any of these functions in C. elegans. First of all, it's expressed only in HYPE7. Second, we don't need it early in the early um, development, only in larvae. So we thought, are these even conserved? But they are. I succeeded to rescue my NACL3 mutants with um, human cDNA of NAC6 or and NAC7. As uh, you can see here, uh, they're also expressed in um, HYPE7, um, forming some puncta, but they're also expressed in the nuclei of HYPE7, which is not the case with NACL3. So we think there is additional function that was overlooked in other systems. And going back to NAC8, which is ortholog of NACL2, 
You can see and that it's expressed in primary cilia, and that's where it's usually studied because it's important for normal formation of kidneys and heart in humans. Um, but interestingly, HYPE 7 doesn't contain primary cilia. Um, it's expressed in the inversin compartment of primary cilia, and we identified exactly the same phenotype, and when we mapped the mutation, it was in MALT4, which is uh, ortholog of inversin. Furthermore, we found the same phenotype in ANX6 and ANX3, which are all uh, parts of this same compartment in primary cilia in humans. So MOLD2, MOLD3, and MOLD4 are causing the same phenotypes, complete enclosure, in knockouts, or in hypomorphs, we can see corset phenotype. So we wanted to know if they're genetically interacting. The easiest way was to use RNAi. As you can see here, as an example, we're, I'm showing MOLD2 RNAi, but we tested all three of them. And MOLD2 RNAi is doing nothing in wild type. You can grow them, they're happy. Uh, but if you put NACL2 viable hypomorphic alleles on this RNAi, you can see that they arrest really early. This graph is showing size of the animal and they're enclosed in the old cuticle. And similar effect you get for NACL3, so hypomorphic alleles. So um, they are genetically interacting. So what are MOLT proteins? MOLT stands for molting defective. Well, they're not very well characterized. No one actually looked at these proteins yet. So the only predicted domains they have are anchoring repeats. And one of them also contains um, sterile alpha motif domain. What is known for these domains is that they serve for protein-protein interactions. And so our premise was that they might act as molecular anchors for these kinases. To test this, I used my CRISPR alliance for NACL2 and NACL3, marked with uh, neon green. And I wanted to see if MOL234 RNAIs will cause some change in the expression. As you can see in the lower panels, in apical surface, NACL2 stops to be expressed in, in this um, seam cell um, boundary region after we deplete MOLT2. And also, you can see that it becomes more nuclear um, after MOLT2 depletion. When we use MOLT4 SV9 allele, you can see that it also disappears from this boundary region, but it doesn't become nuclear. So we wanted to know if they co-localize, and they co-localize partially or completely, so NACL2, MOLD2, and MOLD4. On the other side, we have MOLD3, which regulates localization of NACL3. And they are, ex so after we deplete MOLD3, you can see that NACL3 becomes highly nuclear. And this is conserved, actually, in mammalian cells. And also, we were the first to confirm that these physically interact directly through the yeast 2 hybrid, as you can see here. And we also shown that um, these co-localize in, in HYPE 7, NACL3 and MOL3. So to summarize this part, uh, we shown that um, NACL2 co-localizes with both MOL2 and MOL4, especially at the seam cell boundary, and that NACL3 co-localizes with MOL3 and sometimes with the other components. If we deplete MOL2, what you will see is that NACL2 is released from the seam cell boundary and it gets into the nucleus. Similarly, if you deplete MOL3, NACL3 will get into the nucleus. And if you deplete MOLD4, NACL2 is going to be released from the seam cell, cell, cell boundary. I also want to point out that these structures are highly dynamic, so that's why we can see the change in localization and co-localization. So the biggest dots that you can see in the first movie are moving usually uh, oscillatory or... Um, it stopped. Okay. Um, uh, but smaller dots are moving more linearly or um, in circles. Um, and in this other one, you can see that they actually tend to merge with each other. Um, so this all reminded us in, um, to vesicles and cytoskeleton changes that you can see in HYPE 7. So we think that one possible function of this network, which is conserved, is to regulate trafficking directly or indirectly. 
And we tested several types of um, endocytic markers in HYPE 7, but I'm showing you only one, which is a heavy clattering chain GFP. And you can see this is the normal pattern in HYPE 7, and if we, as a control, use RNAi of CoA1, which is not, which is causing a molting defect, but it's not, we think it's not involved in this um, whole network, you can see that it stays normal. But if we put them on NECL2 RNAi, this is what happens. We have these two phenotypes. Sometimes they really um, make these huge aggregates, and sometimes they are smeared on the apical surface, suggesting that they cannot form proper vesicles. And similar effect is visible after we deplete NECL3 or MOL3. But this could be indirect. Why? Because we don't see this in every single animal. So I was thinking, you know, maybe there is some other mechanism um, that is affected, and then this is just indirect consequence of that, meaning that it can affect cytoskeleton or other components. So as my future directions and hint that I have so far, CDC42 tends to be have on and off switch during the endocytosis, and we found in completely separate um, suppressor screen that CDC42 RNAi is suppressing this NACL3 phenotype. They get much bigger um, and much more happy, if I can say that way, on this lethal RNAi. Um, and not just NACL3. We confirmed this for NACL2 and MOLT4, for which we have these hypomorphic alleles that form corset phenotype. Um, additionally, um, it was shown that MOLT4 has uh, ortholog inversin, as I said, and if you knock out inversin in human cells, there is more activity of CDC42. So as my conclusions, we, we characterize this conserved NACL MOLT protein network that regulates molting in C. elegans, um, and uh, it contains two uh, largely distinct functional units that are comprised from NACL2, MOLT2, MOLT4, and on the other side we have NACL3, MOLT3. Uh, MOLT proteins regulate localization of NACL kinases in epidermis, and they're involved in intracellular trafficking. So I would like to thank to my boss, David Fay. He's a really tough guy, as you can tell by my face. I'm just kidding. He's actually a really nice guy. And I want to thank you, David, for everything you've done for my career so far. And I would like to thank to John Yoakam, who started this project a long time ago. And also I would like to thank all my colleagues in Fay Lab and to our fundings. And I would like to thank you for listening to my talk. Thank you. The nuclear accumulation of, it was NEC2, right? Uh, with, that was nuclear localized in the MOLT2 RNAi, wasn't it, or whatever? Yes. Yeah. Do you think that reflects that normally the protein actually does visit the nucleus at some point, does something and go out again, or you, or you think it's a kind of artificial? Uh, so, so I spent two days looking at this, uh, following worms from hatching till they get to adulthood, and I never observed that, to, that protein normally gets into the nucleus. So only after I deplete MOLT2 in case of NACL2, I see that it gets into ha the Have you looked if the protein has a putative nuclear export signal that you could knock out and then see if under those... It doesn't because have it could be that the protein gets in and out very fast, and so that's why you just don't visualize right. it. Um, I didn't find any signal. The only domain that I can find that is predicted is kinase domain and nothing else. So this is the only thing. But thank you. Yeah. So would you know which protein is being endocytosis or trafficked in, uh, by this uh, complex? Um, well, this complex, I'm not really sure. I still didn't do the study if these are actually endosomes. but. There are several factors that need to be endocytosed during the molting. For example, sterols, which is controlled with LRP1. And we've shown that LRP1 pattern is changed upon NACL2 RNAi, so that could be a case. But there are also additional proteins that are getting um, endocytosed um, during the molting uh, cycle because they're recycling some stuff from their old cuticle um, so to be reused in the in the. Uh, hype 7. But I don't know what's the answer to that question. Thank you. Um, have you checked 
to see if genetically there's two group of genes, the kinase and the mold uh, 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 genes function in the same cell type? You mean in the orthologs or? or? Right. Um, so, as I said, um, molts and ortholog of NECL2 are even expressed in the same compartment of, of primary cilia, and they do physically interact. That's the prediction in mammalian cells. Um, so, that's known already. Um, if that was your question, I'm not sure. Yeah? Okay. Thanks. Just have a more of a general question about molting. Are there, are there gain of function conditions in this pathway, or maybe a different mutants where you shut the cuticle but you don't make a cuticle, like a new one? Just um, well, I'm not aware of that, but in case of my it's the same pro process or is it a different process? Right. Yeah, I, I I'm not aware of them, so I I don't know. Yeah. Thank you.